Okay, we've just finished our discussion of um, rsync, and now let's discuss a few other commands. Remember, for making um, um, DVDs or CDs, you can do that with a variety of commands like KB or K3B or Oh, XCD roast, or a lot of commands that have um, a, a GUI user interface. Just simply look at your menus to find those. But if you want to do that from a script, the commands to use are make ISO FS. That is the command that takes all your data and puts it onto a um, um, one big file, which is a ISO image, an ISO 9060 image, uh, that can then be burned onto the DVD or uh, itself. The commands to do that, you could use a DD command, but the modern command to do that is this uh, WODIM. Or you may still have a copy. If you have an older copy of Linux, you may be using CD record. And if you don't have either of those, you could probably get by with DD. Another command is DD. DD is a great command for doing a lot of things. Um, suppose you actually do just want to make a copy of your hard drive from one hard drive to another hard drive. The command I would use to do that is likely to be, actually it's likely to be DD. Um, I'd probably use, I'd probably make the file systems first and use rsync, but you could use DD. That would work just fine. Uh, and it's used quite a lot for that. There's also a command set called uh, dump restore. This is described in the book. I've never really used dump restore. I've read about them. Um, and I'll let you read the book on them. I will say one thing about the differences between tar and CPIO and um, possibly dump restore. There are two types, uh, two ways of capturing archives. You can either capture them as logical information, meaning you take first file, second file, third file, and everything's kept as a sequence of files on your backup media. Or you can try to capture the physical blocks off the disk and store those one after another on your media. And I call those that physical backups. Physical backups are usually much, much faster to do and um, probably use fewer resources. They're faster to do. And we used to do a lot of physical backups. Um, we'd take just an image of the disk and put it onto a mag tape or a series of magnetic tapes. Um, the problem with those is because your file is all chopped up all over the disk, but your um, that means that if you want to restore a file, one file from uh, a physical backup, either it's hard or it's impossible, uh, depending on the system you're using. Because it's got to jump all over that media, which if that's a tape, that means winding the tape this way, winding the tape that way. And it, it, it's a mess to restore um, uh, one file. And remember, 90% of all, you know, or something, a huge percentage of all your data losses are not when the whole system gets wiped out. It's really when um, uh, John deletes five files that he shouldn't have deleted. Or I'm sitting there, and I'm typing rm minus f, and I do it in the wrong place, and I kill all of my labs for a certain class. It's not likely I did that at the root directory and killed the whole root directory. But killing all the labs for a certain class, I still you know, I want to get those back. That's pretty important to me, even if it's not devastating the whole system. Most backups you do, or most data recoveries you do, you only have to recover a few files. Um, and physical backups, I think, don't work very well for that. Um, OK. Now, I will say another thing is um, 
because sometimes you just can't shut the system down and do your backup, certain subsystems and certain commands have their own backup commands that you can use. And you do use those basically when you can't shut down the system. For example, if I have a Postgres or a MySQL database server running my website, and my website, you know, people from around the world use the website. It's got to be up all the time. People are updating it. People, I can't just shut down my database to do a backup. I can't afford two hours to do that every day. Um, so. Most database systems, all the big ones, give you some sort of a command. In Postgres, the command is called pg underscore dump. In MySQL, I believe the command is called MySQ, MySQL dump. In Oracle, the command exists, but I don't remember the name of the Oracle command. All of these um, database systems have a system to back themselves up in real time without shutting the system down. In the case of MySQL dump and PG dump, and actually the Oracle one too, what it does, or one option, is it will extract a huge glob of SQL statements, which are enough SQL statements to rebuild the database, including the data, as is at, at at the time you typed uh, um, the command. And, um, and everything will be in sync. It keeps track of the fact that some people are updating the database as it's executing the backup command. So it will get everything back to a solid state um, um, if you have to recover using those. Likewise, a lot of virtual. Um, Virtualization software like um, um, VirtualBox and uh, VMware have snapshot systems where I can snapshot the hard drive at a, or my hard drives at a certain point. Then I can then if I do a backup, I have that snapshotted hard drive, and we can always fall back to that snapshotted hard drive. So I can use that snapshot facility to help me. Um, um, freeze that virtual machine in time. Um, I suppose to some extent I can actually freeze my entire system using some sort of a snapshot. And um, systems like LVM, Logical Volume Manager, or if I use a RAID uh, level 1, uh, which is what, disk mirroring, I could then by closing down my RAID at a certain point, that would leave the one disk as being a snapshot of the system. I could then use that as my backup, throw in a new disk, and uh, add that back into the RAID. And the RAID will um, update the new disk and get the two disks up to sync so that I could take a disk out of the system every day um, using um, um, by snapshotting using kind of a RAID or an LVM type facility, I would probably still have some trouble with synchronization. Um, I mean, I, it's still at the point where it's best to do this when there's the least traffic on the system possible. But um, but this really is much, much, much better than trying to do, uh, trying to make tapes on the system that take three hours to make while the system is changing all, all around. Um, at the enterprise, uh, these commands that I've used that I've shown you so far is indeed what most of us do for backups. Um, at the enterprise level, people tend to use a little bit more sophisticated tools. And many of which are commercial, are, are proprietary. Uh, tools like Veritas. Veritas is one of the big names. But um, And these are complete backup solutions in that they include schedulers that automatically do the job at a certain schedule. Although I suppose using TAR, or CPIO, and um, Cron, you have done the same thing. Um, 
they also include catalogs where uh, the data that you are that you put onto the backup is kept in a database or kept in some sort of an um, um, there's some uh, basically a listing of all the files along with the update times or whatever is kept in a database on the original system so that if I'm looking for a file I can go to this arc uh, to this database and it will tell me what tape or what CD or what DVD I have to get to get that piece that file to recover that file. And these catalogs can be very, very useful. Um, uh, an open source solution of that type, which I've never used myself, is called Amanda. Another one is this one down here, the A-R-K-E-A-I-A. -A. Uh, Barcula is supposed to be an excellent solution. I really don't have much experience at all with any of these. I've used Veritas some, and I, uh, which isn't included on my list. And I've used Amanda a little. But, um, but generally, I've done them using, including at big enterprises like BLM, I've done them using TAR and CPIO and homegrown tools. Um, and here's a couple more, Mono. Rescue and and there's there's tons of them, okay, which leads us out of backup into um, disaster planning, and this is another big area for systems administrators. is is basically and I've written disaster plans where you basically write an entire plan of how you're going to handle a disaster. Suppose the um, city of New Orleans floods. How are you going to protect your computer systems? What do you have to have in place, you know, so that you can get up the next day if uh, if uh, the city of New Orleans floods? Uh, do I have my offsite backups? Do I need hot computers someplace that I can put into place if if things go wrong? Um, you know, if I'm a bank, I probably do. If I'm a bank, I can't afford to be down 24 hours. Um, I've, I've got to, you know, if I'm my local Fred Meyer store, I, I, those cash registers have to be up right away. If there's a bad, bad earthquake, I'd still like to get those back online within, say, an hour um, because people are going to need to buy things to clean up after the earthquake and stuff. So like, say, the San Francisco earthquake, um, you know, you have to plan for that. And that takes formal disaster planning. That is a job for systems administrators. Um, this also eventually gets us into data recovery uh, techniques, which we have talked about earlier in the course. Um, things like DD, DDR, uh, DD Rescue, um, techniques you can use to recover data uh, once a bad thing does happen. Um, okay, the last thing in the book has to do with uh, software installation, and I'm going to just simply let you read the book on that. Um, um, I, I don't have too much to say about that. Um, or, or else I have so much to say about that that um, um, that I really just can't say at all within a, a tight um, within a little bit of time. The book um, doesn't say a lot about um, um, software installation, but basically we use either the deb package of commands if we're using a Debian-based system such as Ubuntu, or we use the RPM system if we're using um, um, Red Hat, Fedora, or SUS, or some of these systems like SUS will actually allow you to install DEBs as well as RPMs. They're built for RPMs, but I have very successfully installed DEBs on a SUSE system without any trouble. Um, I don't recall ever installing RPMs on a, on a, a, a Debian 